good guys welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video bronze rise here i'm at infinity of daytona beach where i have behind me a 2019 infinity q50 red sport 400 now you guys are helping me do my car shopping as everybody knows i will be trading in my maserati ghibli come summer and i'm going for something a little bit more modest the next time around i do my car shopping so for my next car i'm looking for something a little bit more modest than the maserati ghibli keeping things down like the maintenance costs the fuel costs stuff like the warranty having a nice warranty but still having something nice and fun to drive so i asked you guys in videos previously to this one what car should i get next so you guys have been speaking in the comments below letting me know what car i should drive and what car i should buy so this infinity q50 was one that you guys wanted me to check out said it was very nice it was something that was fun to drive and it was a reasonable price now my price range is between 30 and fifty thousand dollars so this one pushes the budget a little bit but i wanted to show you guys a q50 and this is the one i was able to get a hold of so i'm going to let you guys know what the red sport 400 really does and we're going to talk about the features we're going to take it for a drive do all that great stuff so you guys can see if this is a car for me now as you guys can see this red sport is beautifully done exterior wise Infinity calls this dynamic sunstone, and the interior is called quilted gallery. So you'll definitely see why that's called the quilted gallery inside. But let's talk about this red. This looks very sharp. Right here in this Florida sun, you're seeing a little bit of metallic flake in it, but with the body lines of the Infinity, it's definitely gonna give that aggressive look off really well. Uh, red just kind of gives it that fiery look on the outside. With it, you have the nice black accents that go along the front bumper here, and you have some along the rear as well. On the side skirts, you're looking at the same kind of sunstone on the side, just to kind of keep everything nice and flush in one color. But this looks cool from the exterior standpoint. I'm gonna sweep around to the back so you guys can see that as well. But yeah, I love this red. I mean, even the black accents right here on the mirrors, the chrome door handles, and they didn't do black with it, but they integrated it with that sunstone red. So that actually looks really good kind of infusing that together not just all chrome not black and chrome but the chrome and the red and then when you come along the back here you're seeing more of the chrome and red accents and everything for that color scheme but then you're breaking it up again with the black there make it a little bit more sportier with the red diffuser right there in the middle so it kind of separates that color and gives it that sporty look but that that's very sharp now apart from the dynamic sunston you get the quilted gallery leather so this is a very nice white leather um, i would say more white than cream it has the contrasted red stitching as you can see but you know where that quilted name comes from right there quilted along the bolstering on the sides and on the butt rest i mean that's very luxurious looking and let me tell you guys it's very luxurious feeling as i sat in it just for a moment it's very comfortable very nice probably not my color choice because of the fact that it is white and we all know if you're not new to the channel my uh, love-hate relationship with white interiors why well, they look beautiful um but you know i'm gonna be a person that's gonna get it dirty very quickly um but just to go over a quick sweep throughout the rest of the interior you have two screens which i'll get to that in a moment here um, but you have leather soft touch material you even have the red stitching going across the dash up top in a couple of places and all throughout through the center console here over the glove box i mean it's a very nice look even in the quilted doors and the aluminum steel look for everything else there too. It's a very nice touch, very luxurious looking, and I do like that it is comfortable. That is a big plus for this quilted gallery interior. Let's talk about the performance of this twin turbo V6 in the Q50. This V6 is a three liter putting out 400 horsepower. You have 350 foot pounds of torque with a seven speed automatic transmission. Currently, my Ghibli right now stands at 404 horsepower, being the top of the line for the Ghibli in 2016. Now Maserati has 424, but this is only four horsepower less than my current car. Now, stuff that makes this Q50 Red Sport Edition really performance driven is stuff like the dynamic digital suspension, you have the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters, you have 19 inch aluminum alloy wheels, all right, you have summer performance run flat tires. You have sport brakes with red painted calipers, zero lift aerodynamics concept, 
and you have the infinity drive mode selector also with vehicle speed sensitive power steering active traction control and exclusive red sport 400 exhaust i do like these 19 inch alloy wheels what really makes it is the red calipers with the infinity logo really gives it that sporty look um, you do have the brake discs there that i wish were slotted or drilled just to probably give it a better look better performance but if you don't necessarily need it it's just show it's just a gimmick but it does look really good these tires are p245 40 r19s in the front and p265 35 r19s in the rear i also do really like the presence of the grill it is actually functional to provide cooling to the radiator there as you can see behind it there but really just to help airflow out um, also through the bottom here is you can stick your finger in everything functional i do like the headlight layout too big swooping led there very sharp very shaped towards the vehicle to make it look pretty angry pretty aggressive and underneath that sharp headlight is a fog light with your turn indicator there now i do like that the turn indicator is separate um, it doesn't have to be integrated in the headlight all the time if it doesn't make sense so you do actually have your turn indicator here with fog lights up front a lot of the sports cars these days aren't doing front fog lights you'll see them in the rear um, Alfa Romeo Maserati they have them in the rear of the car the rear of the tail light you'll see the fog lights very nice to see that they still have something classic but they make it look more modern now we do get the fake grill up front here this is what I was talking about obviously you can't put a grill here that's really going to make much sense um, that's not how it's designed but since it's there they had to fill it in with something so that's how it is I'm comparing the front grill up here to where it's functional now here's a quick look of the LED running the projector light running, the turn signal running, and the fog light. Pretty sharp looking combo. Here's a look at the rear tail light with the turn indicator running. Another sharp clean look. What I really like is this exhaust tip. Makes it look like it's gonna spit fire, makes it look like a flamethrower, in my opinion. Very sporty, very aggressive look. Now here's the key fob for the Infiniti Q50. Pretty simple, pretty to the point. Uh, plastic with the aluminum buttons here and the insignia. You do have right here, your remote start. You have your lock button there. You have your unlock button. You have your hold there for your trunk release. And you have your panic button there. Other than that, it's pretty simple, pretty to the point. Let's talk about the interior of the Q50 before we hop in. With this specific interior, you're looking at a lot of luxury, as you can already tell right off the bat, right? Well, let's talk about a few things. You're looking at the semi aniline leather appointed seats. You're looking at the leather wrapped three spoke steering wheel, heated steering wheel, heated eight way power sport seats. You also have the driver's seat power lumbar side bolsters. You have stuff like the red contrast interior stitching, the dual zone automatic temperature control. You have the aluminum interior trim. You also have the tilt and telescoping steering wheel, stuff like the welcome lighting on the front door handles. You have the aluminum front door sill kick plates. All right. You also have power windows with one touch auto up and down, power door locks, auto locking feature. You have rain sensing wipers, auto dim dimming mirror. You have the home link. You also have the power sliding tinted glass moonroof and the one touch auto open for that. You have the 60-40 rear split down seats. You have the heated steering wheel and the remote engine start stop system. Let's start this Q50 by going to the side here and hitting that big start stop engine button. Sounds pretty nice. Infinity insignia there with the infinity touch on the infotainment there. On the headlight right here up top, you do have your dome lights for both sides here. You have your middle dome light here. You have your flood lights. You do have your sunroof there. And you have your SOS button. Now, you're probably wondering what this section is here. Well, for your glasses or for your tacos, depending on what you want to put in there. Um, and then if you look up, we can just slide this back and get all the sun we need. And then if we need to let everything back, we're going to press this button here. Let the sun out enough to go over your driver and your front seat passenger but nothing for the rear seat unless you have something like a panoramic roof which is not available on this specific vehicle but plenty of enough up front nothing crazy up top looks pretty good now this is something you have to get used to two screens stacked on top of each other this q50 is definitely loaded with a lot of technology 
Couple things it has is a round view monitor with moving object detection, front and rear sonar system. Um, it has an infinity touch, which you see down here, and that's a navigation with voice recognition. It has the Bluetooth hands-free phone system with hands-free text messages, assistant plus the AM, FM, HD radio, CD, six speaker audio system with Sirius XM Radio Plus, Sirius XM Travel Link, and Traffic Plus. You also have the streaming audio with Bluetooth, the intelligent key with the push button start, and the cruise control steering wheel switches. You also get some safety features with this Infiniti Q50. You get driver and front passenger seat mounted side supplemental airbags. You get Infiniti Advanced Airbag System with roof mounted curtain side impact supplement airbags. You get the three point front seat belt with pretensioners and load limiters. You also have lower anchors and tethers for children, anti-lock brake system, brake assist, electronic brake force distribution, vehicle dynamic control with traction control system. You also get stuff like the tire specific pressure monitor system. You get the vehicle security system, the infinity immobilizer system as well. You also get blind spot warning, backup collision intervention, predictive forward collision warning, and forward emergency braking. So my first impressions here, just getting in and playing with everything without even really going over it, it's very nice. It's very clean, very simple, um, very easy to use. I mean, everything's spelled out for you right up front, but everything is pretty standard, pretty set to the point. I do like these big paddle shifters. Now they're not necessarily big like the Italian paddle shifters, but since they are steering wheel mount, mounted, they're gonna be a little bit smaller, but these are bigger than normal. Normally I'd see just the paddle sticking up right up top here. This one has it at the bottom too. So you can tell that they went with a bigger design for this just to give it a better functionality and it looks a little bit better in my opinion as well. But looking at the first things here, the steering wheel, which you first see, horn sounds good. It's normal horn. Um, you also have right here on the side, your hands free for your voice commands and for your phone. You also have your radio controls, turning everything up and down as far as volume here. All right, you also have your menu controls and your menu controls will control actually on the side here, which I was looking right here to control the menu there, but that's actually in another screen. So you're gonna use this here to control everything for your navigation, which is really cool that you can do it from the steering wheel. So it's pretty simple to use, press okay, for the menu, and there you are, you have your menu. If you wanna move up and down throughout the menu, you're gonna move this up and down, and that's gonna move through everything here. Stuff like your audio source, nearby places, store location, view settings. I'm gonna press okay to view settings. Now you get your full map, you get your split map, which is very nice. Intersection, turn list, where am I? I mean, turn by turn, very simple. And like I said, I'm just getting in here and playing with this as I go. It's one of those things where you don't really need to be educated on. You can just get in and go, which is very nice because just by messing with the buttons a little bit, I mean, it just, it's, it's very straightforward. It's not rocket science with this. Even you press this to go back your you know previous screen, that's all. And then on this side, so if you wanna do your cruise control, you'll use your toggle here. You'll do your distance here between cars, your cruise control actual button here. But these are the buttons that I was looking for because that is actually gonna change your screen up here. Go through things like your service due, your tire pressure, your driving aids, your radio, your um, compass there, your fuel economy, and your range, which I was just at there. All right now I have my range or I can do like I was doing earlier and change the system and do different things like fuel economy and stuff like that. Um, you do have your car here with the parking sensors ready to go off when you need it. You have your time there, you have your temperature there. You have what drive mode you're in here and what gear you're in, your miles there and your trip. Aluminum pedals for the win. I do like the aluminum look, gives it that sporty flavor. You even have the aluminum dead pedal there. Wish it was a little bit bigger. Um, it's like pushed over in the corner there. Still looks good. And you do have your parking brake here. No electric parking brake. You're actually using this for your parking brake here. Just above that dead pedal is your traction button and your trunk release there. Blank button in the middle. If you were to have a different option, it would be put there. If you go a little bit above that, you're looking at your auto dimmer here for your speedo. So you can have your dimmer there to go down or up and then you have your trip reset there as well. Door panel, you do have your nice aluminum door handle there. You have your seat memory here, 
two presets for your seat memory. You have your mirror control right above here. You have your lock and unlock buttons there. And you have your window switches. Lock for the window switches and A for automatic. Big Bose speaker for the sound system right here in the door panel. Obviously Bose does it very well, so the sound system quality has to be top notch. Now under that Bose speaker, you do have another speaker there as well. The Bose speaker is an additional speaker to come with the upgraded package. You also have a little cup holder here just to kind of, you know, put maybe a water bottle or something that may fit in there. Um, not a lot of space, but something for something small. Let's check out the glove box. That is a central station for some people, so this may be very important. So inside your glove box, you have a nice cloth. I do like this because you can clean off your screen, especially with having two screens and having a very glossy screen for that being. You do have a nice cloth to clean off your screen. I do like that. You even get a cable here, a USB cable, which is nice as well. So, I mean, it's giving you the accessories you need in order to live your everyday life in this car. You do have two USB ports right there with an SD port, all right? And you have your aux jacks as well there too. And then if we look a little closer, we'll pull that back and there is our 12 volt. Coming along the center console here, we have our cup holders. I do like how this is a very flowy integrated system. Um, it fits very well with the way that they designed this dash. Now when you go up here, you might get a few fingertips right up here in this shiny material, but at the same time, they did give you a cloth so you can keep it clean. So they're thinking about you. They're like, hey, I know our material looks good and it may fingerprint very well, but we're gonna take care of you and make sure that you have something to clean up with. So that's very nice as well. So you do have your drive mode here, which we can do our drive mode selector up and down. Now, when we move this up and down on our infotainment screen, this is what we're gonna see. We're gonna see eco, we're gonna see snow. We're gonna go up to standard and it shows everything that's changing right there with the diagram of the vehicle. Sport mode, all right, sport plus, and then personal for customization. Now this may seem redundant, but this rotary button actually does the same thing that these menu buttons do here for the infotainment system. So if I wanted to move up and down here, I move up and down through the infotainment system. If I wanted to select something, I hit OK. If I wanted to go backwards, I press back there and go back to the navigation screen. When I press OK, that brings up the menu there. So it does the same exact thing that we went over with these buttons, but just with the rotary there. You can also bring your map voice up, so you can do voice by map, and you can bring up your camera, which is gonna be very helpful when you're trying to park. So you get the nice 360 angle for the camera for this option. You can either change the view too. So if I wanna change the view, I can press that touch screen right there. So now I can actually see in real time the side of the car there, and it's really cool. You do have your dual zone climate controls. You just have your controls laid out vertically on each side here, which is something a little new, I'm not used to. Um, so you do have your heat, and you have your cooling, auto, and you have your fan speed and your direction of where your fan's going. All right, so on this side, you also have that same there, your flow through there, and your defrosters here with your on and off easy button there to just turn the fans and everything off right away. So you can turn it back on and get everything flowing or just keep it that way, depending on what you like. That's really cool, um, pretty simple, pretty easy. All right, before we get into the infotainment, let's look at the drive selector here. I do like that it is styled the way it is with that shiny black material, the infinity insignia there. Also with the leather wrap on the steering wheel and the contrasted stitching. You also have the leather wrap boot with the contrasted stitching, which is really nice. And then you have your drive selects there. Park, reverse, neutral, drive, and you have right there that manual, which I love the best. Now, besides this being a very awkward spot, you can actually lift this up and you have a little bit of stowage here with a 12 volt. But I feel like it's a little bit in the way with the gear select here and trying to move through here. It's kind of like, oh, which way should I go? Which should I move around this way? Should I go around this way? Now, obviously, when you're in your drive mode, it's gonna be a little bit more accessible. All right, so that's a different you know, case. But if I were to have it in park, 
um, it's gonna be a little harder to kind of reach through here and get to that selection there. Now under the infotainment screen is something that I haven't seen in a while on newer vehicles and that's a CD player. It actually has a CD player here. You see the eject button here. This is one thing that a lot of car makers don't do today because they're moving to all digital. So this actually has a CD player and you can select your track there. You can change your folder, everything like that. Or you can just use this for the radio as well. So very multifunctional there, but that is something that I have not seen. You know, you go from having a tape deck to having a CD player to have full digital, but you still have a CD player. Now my 2016 Ghibli still has a CD player. The 2017 models from Maserati got rid of that. So I'm used to it myself, but I'm not used to seeing it in newer vehicles, which isn't a bad thing at all. You have your passenger airbag here and you have your hazards right under that. But that's, I mean, that's really cool. So you do have for your screen here, some quick buttons like the climate, like the menu and like the audio. So you can bring everything up with those hot buttons there, or those hot keys, climate there to show your different climate controls and your menu button to take you to that home screen. Now, through the infotainment, again, pretty simple, big bold buttons to let you know what you're doing, arrows to let you know that you're going to different screens. This is a blank app screen, but if I keep going over actually to the right hand side here, you'll see actual apps show up on this screen. Again, apps on this screen, so it just allows you to have more screens for more apps in case they get filled up. But you have your compass, you have your driving performance, you have your infinity drive mode selector, your app garage, you have your clock, quick guide, infinity intuition, driver assistance, SXM info. On your home screen, you have your street adjust, you have your point of interest, your home destination for the nav up top, and then your apps at the bottom, the ones that you probably use the most, phone information, in touch devices, and settings. So in your settings, Bluetooth, phone, mail, vehicle, navigation, meter, adjust volume, your screen, audio, and you have another page there, clock, in-touch services, voice recognition, camera sonar, drive mode, and other. Let's talk about the rear seat space. I'm going to get in the back here. Not fit quite easily back here. Being 5'11", I'm probably normal size, I mean average size for most adults. And I fit quite well back here. Now, I want to see if you guys can see, but I have plenty of room up here at the top of my head if I sit how I would normally sit. I have to be sitting up to actually hit my head on the top of the ceiling. So I do kind of sit like this. You know, this is the most comfortable position, and this is where you would really be sitting with your head on the headrest right here. So you guys can see the space is going to depend on where the driver and passenger are sitting at the time as far as how far they have back their seat. So on the back of these seats, look very nice. You do have the extra stowage pocket. You do have two HVAC vents on the back here, on the back of the armrest. Nothing else though, um, everything here is sealed in. So normally you would have something like a 12 volt or USB plug-in or something like that. Not on the back of here, even if you were to pull down the center here, you're not looking at any kind of USB plugins or anything like that. You open this up for cup holders, but that's pretty much it. So a little bit of a bummer that it does not have any plugins for back seat charging or anything like that. Um, I've looked around, I don't think I see any particularly, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles. But again, I do love this seating. Still looks good in the back, just as well as it does up front. It is very comfortable. This makes for a very smooth, enjoying, relaxing ride. Let's talk about the trunk space of the Q50. You're looking at 13.2 to 13.5 cubic feet of space. You also have the rear fold down seat, 60-40 split. If you wanna fold down the rear seats, what you're looking at is pulling this lever on this side for the right-hand side, and then this lever on this side for the driver's side. So you just pull those back and push the seats. Nothing to it, right? You also have all of this space right up front here, a couple of accessories with it as well. And then obviously there's the pull tab here because we got a couple of goodies underneath like stowage and tools for you guys too. But these are run flat tires, so you will not see a spare tire in the boot here. Run flat is the design for these tires. Okay, 
Okay, so you can only get Sport Plus and Red Sport. Yeah, if you get a regular Sport, you're not going to have that Sport Plus. Okay. I believe you might have it in a regular Sport. We'll find out because we do have a regular Sport there. What's the advantage of Sport Plus? Sport Plus, so essentially what it's going to do, it's going to retune the transmission to shift and um, hang the gears a little bit more like a sports car. Um, it's going to be more for a sporty purpose, so I'm going to put it in kind of manual mode now. You got a little tire squeal too. Yeah. Well, the system in here, the VDC system, the traction control, the way it's set up, I mean, you can't, uh, it, it, you could break loose on it, but you really got to abuse it to get to that point. Right. It's still meant to be a driver's car. So, for argument's sake, like if you want a toy car and do skids and, and, and beat up, you know what I mean? You go ahead and buy a $5,000 toy car. Right. Now, if you have that toy car sitting in the garage, but you just want to have something you're going to drive every day and still embody that same spirit of having that toy car, yeah. this is something you're going to want to get. Okay. That's really the best way I can put it together. Um, like, I have two G35 coupes, one of which is a manual. That's my toy car. That's the one I've been rebuilding. The other one's just a daily for now. And uh, my goal is to either take one of these home or Q60 Sport home. It's going to be one or the other. Okay. Um, but as you can tell, like, it still embodies everything of a sports car. I'm in fifth gear. I want to slow down a little bit. You can downshift as you slow down, just like anything else. Yeah. And you can just... So see how it hangs the gear? Yeah, yep. So that's the one thing that Sport Plus is going to do over, you know, leaving an eco mode or something. Right? Okay. Or manual mode. Because when you're in manual mode and, and you're in eco, it's not going to hang that gear. Okay. Right, I can see if I can try to demonstrate that. So now you're in eco mode. Now I'm in eco mode. You can even feel it. The pedal. Yeah. The pedal's a little bit different. It's a totally different feel. It doesn't have the same pickup. Right. So what I'm going to do is I shoot them the other way. We can go back here. Though. Okay. <laughs> so. So standard mode, what standard mode is going to do, it's actually going to switch between both Sport and Eco. Okay. Um, it won't tell you, but uh, depending on the road conditions, it'll kind of just go back and forth. Okay. Um, what's nice about when you're in standard mode, though, because they want you to sell the best of both worlds, when you do hit the throttle, that boost still kicks in super tight. Right. And right now, we're taking this turn pretty tight, and if there's no loss of grip. You feel confident in right. what you're doing. Right. Sure do. I mean, this is one of the few cars you can get in and just feel confident driving. <laughs> yeah, that's see that turn that turn right there is crucial, and you can take it just like nothing. Yeah, uh, it's really effortless, you know. And um, what's also nice is like the Q50 we sold to my mother, the the Lux Q50, and although it doesn't have the extra 100 horsepower, it still handles and responds the same way you would want it to. Okay. You know what I mean. So uh, it's still got has everything you would want. Like we have the RC 350F. Yeah. It doesn't compare to this vehicle at all. Really? It just doesn't. It looks sharp. I'm not saying it's not a well-built car. I'm not right. saying it's a piece of junk. But as far as driving as, experience. As far as the driving experience, the experience from the car, it's, it's just not the same. Oh, it's a derivative of yeah, the GTR motor? Yeah. The, uh, the, the engine code on this is what is a VR30 DDTT. And the engine code on the um, GTR is a VR38. So the, the the main difference is is the the induction system on this, which in my opinion is very very unique, is as opposed on a traditional turbocharged motor, usually your turbos they sit on a manifold, right? Okay. Yeah. And then uh, that manifold attached to your head. In this case, you know you have the turbos they're direct mounted to the head of of, of the engine. So you have the, the the short block. You have your two cylinder heads that sit on top of that. The turbos bolt directly to the head for a Siamese port, if you will. And um, then you just have your catalytic converters coming off of that and your exhaust. So there's little, they're, they're, they'll spool up faster. There's um, better airflow through the whole system. So uh, the, there's little to no lag from the turbos because okay. it's going straight to the head. So as soon as you start driving, those turbos are spooling out. So, uh, they say, tell me what you want to know. Yeah. And you would down 
shift and rev match this way you can engine brake a little bit so you won't have to be up your brakes so hard yeah this vehicle does have single rev match uh, although it's automatic so it'll still achieve the same thing like i just did i came right. around that turn now the last thing you want to do before you enter a turn is brake so what i did was is i downshifted it did its own rev match it, it's the vehicles you know the drivetrain use itself to slow the vehicle down so it's able to take that turn right. and throttle through the turn. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, a lot of people sometimes like, oh, you know, I wish it was a manual. You know, the way this engine's set up, you know, granted a manual would be fun, but you, wouldn't really, you really wouldn't be getting your money's worth because your body wouldn't be able to keep up with it. Does that right. make any yeah, sense? Yeah, yeah, oh, that's, yeah. That's a big reason why you see a lot of these performance vehicles now come with these automatic transmissions because even me hitting the paddle shifters right now, I mean, it's quick, but it's not anything compared to if I just let the computer do it. Right, right, right. I just yeah. do it because it's fun. Yeah, because you want to be engaged. Yeah. You want to, you know, you really have control of the vehicle. But as, as you can feel driving in the passenger seat, the throttle response time is ridiculous. Yeah. I am in sports plus mode right now. Okay. And, Best mode um, to drive it, you, you feel, if you're a driver? In my, my opinion, if you want to drive the car, yeah. sports plus. Okay. You're on the highway, you just got to do your thing. Eco or standard will do just fine. Okay. But if you want to drive it and, and really just have fun with the car and, and, and get what you paid for, yeah, I, I recommend sports plus and just okay. really have fun with it. Okay. Um, and what's also nice on 19, which is newer, these extended... The paddle, uh, paddle shifters, shifters, I love those. Because uh, uh, the, the 16, uh, excuse me, the 17, the 18, just like the smaller black ones. Yep. These are more metallic feeling. Yep. And they're longer, so you can feel, you can access them from... Either side, yeah, yeah. up and down. And, it, and it's, I like the quality and the look. I mean, Absolutely. yeah, it just, it's a nice setup. But everything in the, the, the excuse me, on the sport package, the Red Sport 400, you have the black headliner, which really ties in well with the interior. It's easier to keep everything clean. Okay, yeah. Yeah, blind spot yeah. warning, the Bose system, sunroof, I mean, even the plastics, are, all the plastics in the headliner are black, so it just kind of... Blends in, it yeah. blends in and ties everything together much yeah. better, you know? And then, of course, I don't know if you guys got a shot of that yesterday, the all-around view, which comes right. handy. I mean, I yeah. still... Oh, yeah. I still have a habit of using my mirrors, but... Yeah, but it's, it's nice to have that extra help. Absolutely. See that? You see what just happened? Yep. It stopped because... It stopped the vehicle. Sense. So let's talk about the price. The sticker of this 2019 Infiniti Q50 Red Sport 400. You're looking at a manufacturer retail suggested base price of $51,000. And your grand total after options is $59,540 US dollars. Now, this is why I said we went over the budget a little bit, but this is the one I was able to get a hold of. So you're knowing in order to get this kind of spec, this is what I have to spend. So you're looking at your performance there and things that I named off earlier for your performance on this Q50. You also have your luxury options there on the side. Now make sure you guys pause this as need be so you can make sure you see everything that comes with this vehicle. Right here, technology. Stuff like that infotainment system and the Bluetooth, everything there. You also have your safety and security, everything that makes you safe and makes you secure for this vehicle. And then your options, stuff like that Bose performance package, which is 16 speakers, $2,650 for the sensory package that also includes the power tilt, telescoping, the dual memory system, the advanced climate control, stuff like that. So make sure you guys look over stuff like that when you're doing the options. You even have the proactive package, there's $2,700. And that proactive package has stuff like your intelligent cruise control, your lane departure prevention, adaptive lighting system. So make sure you check over stuff like that if that's something that you're interested in, all right? So you also, with that, have your cargo package, is $270, your splash guards, you also have your radiant grill emblem. You get a lot of stuff that you get added with this and the destination charge being $995, what brings you to that $59,540. Your fuel economy for the Q50, 22 combined city and highway with 20 city and 26 highway. Now one thing you have to keep in mind is with that fuel economy, you're looking at premium unleaded fuel only. 
So make sure you're putting premium fuel inside for this twin turbo V6 to really do its thing. A good thing to look at here is the warranty. So the warranty is looking at four years, 60,000 mile basic limited coverage. You also have a six year, 70,000 mile powertrain limited warranty. All right, and you have a seven year unlimited mile corrosion limited warranty coverage with 24 hours roadside assistance. So that's also something to note, a great warranty. So you know you're not gonna be spending a lot of money for the cost of ownership for this specific vehicle. And it's great for that longevity in case you decide to keep it past your warranty lane. So you guys let me know, what do you think about the 2019 Q50 Red Sport 400? This is an awesome car. I had a lot of fun here at Daytona Infinity. Make sure if you guys are interested in this car, check out their number, check out the links down below and let you know where to go for their website to inquire on their inventory. Let them know that Ron's Ride sent you and they'll hook you up, definitely. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for Daytona Infinity for providing me this opportunity to be able to test out this car and show it to you guys. And I thank you guys for suggesting it in the comments below and letting me discover such an awesome car so with that said you guys comment down below what do you guys think about the car what do you think about it for the price point what do you guys think as far as could this replace the maserati ghibli i want to know so comment down below if you guys aren't liking the q50 let me know what's the next car you guys want to drive because i'm looking for the next daily driver for me and i definitely want to know you guys opinions definitely down below also check out the patreon social media links stuff like that give the video a like as well and it helps support the channel let's everybody else see the beautiful vehicles that we have out here and on the website and on the channel and you guys gotta subscribe hit that notification bell for more ron's rides videos thank you so much guys we will talk to you in the next one you guys be blessed be easy we'll see you then peace